Welcome to another episode of The Profile. I'm Gary Dunn. Um, this is where we uh, interview some of the more colourful people of our Perth music industry. And tonight on the couch, or the chair, as I call it, uh, oh, too. Keith McDonald. Okay. How, how are you, mate? Thank you for having us on board. No worries, mate. Thank you for coming in. Okay. So, Keith, I'll start with where were you born? Well, I was born in uh, King Edward Hospital. King Edward? King Edward Hospital, 1951. Produced a lot of musicians, King Edward. It would have. Yeah. And uh, you play guitar, obviously, we all know yes, that. Yes, yes. Any other instruments? Yeah, no, that's all I play. That's it? Yeah. Sing, sing and play guitar. Yeah, that's it. And so what was the turning point in your life where you decided, look, this is what I'm going to do with my life? Uh, well, that, that didn't come until um, fairly late, in, in later in life. Yeah. Until I was about, about 20. And uh, I'd been, uh, I'd been playing around town for a while. Uh, in uh, solo and duo, yep. and uh, I was sitting in a uh, a little place. We just come from the. Um, we just come from. <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. No, we ju we just come from uh, our gig at the Sundown Hotel on yep. Friday night, and in those days the pubs used to close at ten o'clock. Yep. Right. So you could go on to another place, mm. and we did, and Nick and myself. And uh, we went to a little place in West Perth. And uh, it, we used to entertain people who just uh, come from the theatre. All right. Going to have a cup of coffee. Yes. And chilling before they went home. And yeah. possibly a little slow red wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, I was uh, at that stage of the piece, uh, I used to just sing and play without drum machine, acoustic yep. guitar. And I was singing a Bob Dylan song in a Bob Dylan-esque voice, mm. you know, like, now, how does it feel? Yes. You know? <laughs> and uh, and uh, people were laughing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, God, I hadn't planned to do it, I just did yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, a, little, a little voice in my head said, you could probably do this for a living. <laughs> yeah. At that stage of the piece, I was still working as a, uh, as a butcher during the day. All oh, right. Yeah. And so obviously you gave the butcher's job up and... Yeah, it, uh, I, I did my apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, when I left school, I was a uh, baker, worked in a fish and yeah. chip shop. Wow. Then I became a butcher. Always around food, Keith. Is there <laughs> something with that? Yeah, no, no, I didn't know what to do, really. <laughs> so the first band, 1968, Coordinated Sound. Oh, yeah. So who was yeah. in that band? Can you remember? Well, we were just a, a bunch of young blokes all out doing it for the first time yep. no we, we none of us knew anything yeah you know and uh i answered that in the paper there was a place by uh tony tony kakamo yeah was tony and um uh gary who's a drummer gary uh, no, no. We, yep. no yeah i think his name was gary ridge yeah right oh not the gary one. ridge no, no oh no, not that gary not that one, no. yeah anyway um we we got together and we Started, we were a garage band. We mm. played in uh, the man, what well, a guy who became our manager. We played in his uh, garage yep. on a Sunday night until yep. the neighbours complained <laughs> and we had to move out and go down to the uh, RSL Hall in uh, Osborne wow. Park, where we continued for about ooh, um, s six months. Yep. And we all felt, Chip, we're getting better. Yeah, <laughs> we're all right. No, 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 we didn't. We no, no, we never got to that <laughs> But we stage. thought we were getting better. We thought we, we, we should get a bass player. Yeah. Right, so we put an ad in the paper for a bass player. And this guy, Ed, showed up. He was from down in Medina. Yeah. And we thought, well, this is not bad. And he said, well, could we, um, could I bring my mate along next week? So, okay. And his mate turned out to be John Meyer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, suddenly, we were this little, this band with John and yeah. Ed in it and we're all playing away at rehearsal and we're uh, Tony and and uh, Gary and I were like this, this, this is, is pretty good this isn't is it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is good <laughs> and we're all nodding yeah. to each other. John Meyer had certainly yeah. had a few assets to the band. Oh sure. he, he was at, but at that stage he was 16 years old yeah. and brilliant. Yeah always. You know? yeah. He was 16 years old and brilliant. It was great and so anyway we did a few jobs as our band we caught ourselves the coordinated sound yeah because it sounded like sounds incorporated okay <laughs> <laughs> and so, we did some jobs around uh, northbridge yep uh we did uh a show at the uh 
the Osborne Park show. Um, and that was about it, really. And then we broke up, as yeah. bands do. Form <laughs> another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I was solo. <laughs> yeah. So prior to that, you did solo work with Channel 7 and Channel 9, talent shows. Um, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Perth New so Faces. And, yes. Yeah. So uh, I always remember seeing you on TV. Yeah, particularly it was way, long time long before time that. a long time before that, yes. Long time before that. It was, uh, it was going back to the days of black and white TV. Yeah. And uh, they uh, had the program that went to air every, every week. And um, I went up and did an audition for it. And I did, um, I sang a song called Our Day Will Come by the Romantics. You know? Yeah, I know that song. And just acoustic guitar and vocal, that was it. No, no backing. Mm. Um, I think the next time we came, on, I think, and that's where I met Harry Black. Yeah. Uh, who was the uh, president of the uh, Musicians, Music, yes. Musicians Union. Yeah. And um, th then f from from there on, there was just a mainly a little bit, a little bit of solo work here and here and yep. there, but not much. Yep. Our band broke up, and um, then after that, we uh, I went to a place uh, in Kalamunda. Yeah, the Kalamunda Ho Tavern, or was Calum it? it was yeah. called the Kalamunda Tavern, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't a tavern. All right. It was a, a it's, it was a restaurant. And its claim to fame was that it uh, did uh, buffet, buffet meals. Yep. Buffet was like the in thing. The yeah, in thing at yeah. the time, and people people sat around. You bought your own wine. Couldn't find a Japanese restaurant in those days. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I went up there to do that job, and uh, uh, while I was there, uh, the guy who used to do it before me was called back because he's very very popular. Mm. And uh, that's where I met him, and he, his name was uh, Davey, yep. Davey James. Davey was a terrific entertainer, and he took me under his wing. Wow. And uh, he said, look, I, would you like to come down and uh, uh, play in my breaks? <laughs> on, um, I'd be honoured. <laughs> couldn't stop me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I had my, my hobby of playing music was turning into something else. Wow. And it was great. Davey was, uh, he was an entertainer and he used to sing uh, risque songs. Yeah. Nothing like, you know, KBW. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit rude. Mm. <laughs> and um, a little bit tongue in cheek, you know. <laughs> and, um, Very popular name, Davey Jones. <laughs> Davey James. Yeah. Oh, James. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I thought you said James. Anyway, um, he, he, he took me on. We, we did a few jobs together as, as a duo. Yeah. And, um, uh, we went up to um, went up the coast and played up there. Yep. And he was a guy who could get up and command the presence of the entire audience mm. without a microphone. So would that have been yeah. when you moved to Bistro Matterhorn and uh, well, the, um, the Bistro, uh, on the last day of the, uh, the Calamante Tavern? Uh, a couple came in who were the proprietors of the Bistro Matterhorn. Yep. They were their names are Tiny and Alec. And they'd moved up from uh, Collie, and uh, they had a, a little uh, coffee shop down there called the Copper Kettle. They uh, they said to me, "Look, come down. We've got a girl who plays on Friday night. You can play on the Saturday night, mm. and it might be a good idea if you got together and did a tour." <laughs> so we did that. Yeah. Anne and I played together um, uh, at the Bistro Matterhorn for a while. Uh, in those days. You, you walked into a place with a, a microphone, a guitar, yeah. um, and a, a Fender amplifier, yeah. and plugged in and played, not, not too loudly. <laughs> yeah. And you just put uh, the mic in the other channel. It's yeah. Amp and, yeah. Yeah. And um, at that stage of the piece, uh, we started to spread our wings a little bit, mm. and uh, we worked at uh, a little place called Moondine Jones. Yep. Up in uh, Mount Lawley. Yeah. Uh, which is now called the Flying Scotsman. Mm. And uh, one night when we were playing, uh, Nick Melodonis came in. Yep. And uh, so who his, was Nick? Not well, Nick. Nick, had, Nick had history. Yep. He had history. He, he'd been in successful bands. Yep. He'd been on uh, the uh, Australian uh, a talent show, uh, and in in his band that were called the. Uh, Twilight, something they were. Yeah. No, the West Coast Trio. Yeah. West Coast Trio, and he had also uh, been in a band called uh, Gemini. Yep. 
who'd had hit records, you know. They were played on radio. Yeah. And uh, Nick, he, he came up to us one night and said, would you like to join me? <laughs> <laughs> wow, right. Would you like to join me? So we went back to his place. And uh, Nick uh, had a little trendy place in, uh, um, in Dianella. And uh, it was all psychedelic. He had the bubble lights <laughs> and uh, a pretty funky uh, hi-fi system. We, we, we sat down, we just listened to some stuff, and he played guitar. And his forte was that he was a really good picker. He could mm. pick and he could do flamenco yeah. and stuff like that. And I thought, well, here's a guy I can learn something from, and yeah. I did. Wow. And uh, from Nick, I learned my, the picking style that I use. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so um, what sort of material were you sort of playing in those uh, days? Mainly all folk music. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Nothing that had a drum in it. Yeah. There wasn't <laughs> well, a lot. I mean, I like pop songs. Yep. Yeah. But um, Peter, Paul and Mary. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, well, they were I, big in those days. and Yeah. Weren't they? So. Oh, yeah. 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 Peter, Paul and Mary. Also, um, Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. Um, Neil Young. Harry Chapin. Yeah. Not so much Neil yeah. Young. Yeah. I, but uh, I had a little bit of it, Neil Young in my record collection. Yeah. But when I um, uh, decided to go full time with, with music, um, I... Oh, I did want to treat it as much like a business as possible. Yeah. And I had a, a set routine. Monday, um, I'd, I'd go to the bank. Mm. Monday afternoon, I'd go down to the, uh, the Purple Ear and Dianella. <laughs> um, I'd also, uh, the guy who was there was an American guy who had a beautiful uh, uh, lady who used to perch up on the <laughs> counter. <laughs> and But he, he got to know... Um, my sort of musical taste yeah. after a while. And he'd yeah. say things like, hey, Keith, come across here, have a look, have a look at this, this is a new guy out, this is yeah. Harry Chapin, <laughs> you know? And uh, so I was singing Harry Chapin songs wow. uh, a few months before he broke into her. Yeah, excellent. And uh, so uh, after a while, I was working fairly consistently mm. because the Tavern scene was, uh, was alive and well. Yes. You know, uh, mainly because uh, I got, you know, guys like uh, um, from the Musicians Union passed a, uh, uh, got a law passed that if tavern managers wanted to uh, trade until midnight, they had to have an entertainment permit. Yeah, yeah. And that was really the first time where I could see where, well, hang on, that was a stroke of, of a pen mm. that affected a lot of people's lives. Yes. And, and certainly mine and probably yours mm. too. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you start with TV programs in Perth. Can you? I mean, I remember seeing you on TV <laughs> many times. But what, can you tell us about that and and, and how you how that evolved? Well, um, uh, in the early days, um, there were there were talent shows, um, there were Today shows, yep. there were kids shows, and um, you know, I was getting a, a bit of a repertoire of songs that I could get up and sing anywhere, any time. Yep. And uh, but the the children's show was one where uh, you know all I had to do was get up and sing a kids song. I thought, well, that's pretty easy. Mm. <laughs> but uh, do you do you remember Christopher May? Yes, one. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all, he had all, a heart attack and a lift. Christopher May, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wonderful singer. Yeah. Oh, he had a great, had a great mm. uh, presence. Great yes. tone in his voice. Yes. Um, and a great entertainer. Mm. And but he was. Amongst all of us who were doing it, he was the man. Yeah, you know, and, and we all liked him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he um, uh, he was he was doing everything. He was doing uh, voiceovers, TV work, and um, I just happened to notice that there were sometimes when he went away. There was an opportunity that that, <laughs> <laughs> that they didn't employ. They didn't have anybody on. Yeah. So I I stuck my hand up and asked for an audition. Mm. And uh, Sandy Baker, yeah, auditioned me. Wow, yeah, and uh, that was that was a foot in the door there yeah. for that for the children's show. Yeah, yeah. So back in those days, you were working six or seven nights a week. Yeah. What was the pay like then? What, the well, okay. Um, started off um, it was around about eighty or ninety dollars a mm. night, mm. you know, and then got to be one hundred and twenty dollars, you know. And, but there, there, were, there were quite a few guys uh, around town who were doing it. 
Yeah. And because there were just so many places to work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it it wasn't like we were trying to sort of cut each other's throat to get the work. Mm. There was and plenty there. There was plenty there. I, think I interviewed and Steve Brozier the other week and he, he was saying in that little precinct of Perth, like Sydney Cellars yeah. and all of those places, um, yeah, there was a lot of solo duos and yes. yeah. um, going on there. Uh, it was mainly a band town, mm. mainly a band town, but, yeah. and, but there was a good cross-section of music, of rock, mm. jazz, yeah. um, uh, Irish music, yeah. Irish band, bands were going well. Yeah. And so everybody was getting a bite of the cherry. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So you moved to England for two years. Uh, why did you move there? And, and uh, well, I felt there? I'd felt that I'd done everything that I could. Yeah. You know, I'd uh, I'd recorded uh, music. Yeah. Uh, I'd recorded with uh, Will Upson. Yeah. Um, and done a few deal. Uh, uh, tried to get a record deal, but didn't didn't mm. didn't happen. And I thought, well, I can't really do much more here, and. Uh, so I'd, I got myself a, a job on board the Arcadia. It was the penultimate mm. voyage of the Arcadia. <laughs> uh, it was going to do one more, then they were going to turn it into Brazen Blades. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and um, it, w- it, was a, it was one of those things where you, you look at the magazine and you've got these lovely mobile women diving into the pool. <laughs> 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 and... and um, and that's what, not what it was like at all. No. <laughs> they were all old people on their last, <laughs> on their last legs. We even had a couple of deaths at, at sea, you know. Wow. And uh, they used to, bury, used to bury them in the morning. Wow. And um, so it was... Uh, was that like a one-way trip to England? <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Luck? Yeah, well, we went, uh, we went from, uh, from Sydney uh, up to Queensland. Yeah. From Queensland across to... Fiji, Honolulu, Honolulu, San Francisco, Los Angeles, yeah. down through the Panama Canal, yeah. and that was incredible. Yeah, you what know. an experience, huh? That was incredible. Then up to Balboa, Barbados, yes. up to um, Madeira, last stop, Southampton. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a six-week trip. Mm. Now, I worked on that ship as the uh, shipboard entertainer, yep. one of them, uh, because there were three or four bands yep. on, on board. Uh, there was uh, an old guy who played the uh, squeeze box, box yeah. and his wife, um, who came out and and uh, in costume and, and held up his music. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, there was a uh, it was it was pretty loose, really. Yeah. And uh, I paid uh, six hundred dollars uh, to. But I ended up with a cabin right. that was uh, above the water level <laughs> on my own. Yeah. Um, and all, all I had to do, and in my contract I still got it, is work for 10 minutes a day. Yeah. You know? Pretty good. Pretty good life. Yes. So back to Perth in 78, back doing solo. No, I, I, but no. anyway, I, uh, before we did that, yeah. I met... Um, uh, Jeff Brownrigg, he was one oh, of the right. uh, solo players yeah. around town. Um, up at uh, O'Connor's, we were double booked. Uh-huh. <laughs> we were double booked. So we, we thought, okay, we'll just play together tonight. We chatted away and he decided that uh, he and his wife would join us well. uh, about two months later. Okay, so they came so, over and... Yeah, mm-hmm. so we were a duo over there for a, a couple of years. Wow. Uh, I mean, that was a... a wasn't the greatest time of life. It was my first time away from home. Yeah. It was. Uh, it, w- it was a bit of a hard slog, but you know you had to sort of learn a whole lot of new things there. Yeah. But one of the things that was uh, that helped us along the way was that we actually had a letter from the musicians' union uh, that opened doors for us. Mm. And we met a guy uh, called uh, Dennis Taylor, who. Uh, went on to do some pretty good things after we'd left. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a little stable of uh, musicians, songwriters, who were great. Mm. You know, I mean, you, you listen to their recordings and you think, well, this is going to get, this will crack through for sure. Yeah. It never did. Yeah. You know, they just, you Amazing. just needed that little bit of luck. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, uh, he came back after, after a year and I continued on. 
And um, then I met, I met my wife uh, there. Uh, she was uh, working as a, uh, as a waitress in this uh, place that uh, sold funky hamburgers. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Jeff and I had been working there as well. Mm. And uh, they used to pay us five quid, something like that. Yeah. But they also took what they called the, the hat around, the push. Yes. Right? Yeah. And because <laughs> while the hat was going, we played our best songs. Yes, of course. <laughs> and we could end up with 30 or 40 yeah. quid. Yeah. Plus our five quid. It's funny, Steve Brazy told me a similar story the other yeah. week, same. Uh, yeah. Of taking oh, right. the hat around and. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where you'd well, make most of your money. So. Well, Steve, uh, he was one of the, the guys that I met when I came to Perth, yeah. back to Perth. He gave me three of his jobs, yeah. and and I gave him uh, three of mine in mm. in uh, England, yeah, in well, London. He did mention that. Yeah, he, he did mention that. So, so not long back, you're singing songs on TV with the kids thing again, and yeah. Um, I think well, that's when I think you hit the big time then, really, because you, you really, were, I mean, it was. We was we I was so busy, um, and you you could say it was the uh, musicians equivalent of living the dream. Mm. Uh, we were doing recordings, we we're doing TV shows. Sometimes uh, we we're doing uh, big shows uh, at the entertainment center. Yeah. And it, it grew and grew and grew and grew because of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the goodwill that uh, I think our show generated. Mm. And it was the other thing about- Is that, that with Percy the Penguin and Fat Cat but, in, yeah, in those days? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, the good thing about it was that it was also a window to a lot of things that were going on mm. in the community yeah. that uh, we don't have now, you know. Yeah. And uh, all these special days that used to go on, we, we were a part of that. We went yeah. out and did things. It was great. Percy the but, Penguin was a bit of a cult hero of mine. He, yeah, yeah, and for, for good reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was great. But, I mean, a, a lot of people were, pe were Percy, a lot of people, but there's mm. only one fat cat. Yes. <laughs> there was only one here, yeah. and, he, and he, he was he was great at it. Yeah. Was, uh, Who was the person uh, behind that? Yeah, I wouldn't. Tell, I, I wouldn't. If, no, I wouldn't have told you now, but I will uh, now. Okay. You know, his name is. Uh, his name was Rachel Whiteman. Right. And he he had a. Um, he's obviously not with us. Uh, no, he's you know, passed on. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. He had a a history that went back with Channel Seven. He was a ballet dancer. He was in the Ch uh, Channel Seven uh, dancers. Yeah. In, in the first Tonight Show they ever had. Yeah. Uh, he worked at the Madge for many, many years uh, as stage manager yeah. in props. Um, and it, it was one of those things where when he was in that uh, costume, he could put an expression onto an expressionless face. Yeah, amazing, you know? huh? He, uh, he put on a bit of weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it was amazing the way he did it. I mean, yeah. he, he was, he had a bodysuit on and yeah. he, he'd take the head off. He was just perspiring. Oh, yeah, M must yeah. have been sort of agon, yeah. half agony under yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but he was a great, he was a great performer. So who were some of the girls that you worked with in those days, uh, Keith? Uh, okay, okay. We started off uh, with Sandy. Yeah. Um, there and uh, Sharon Dale. Yeah, no Sharon. Uh, and uh, Alison Carroll. Yeah. Um, wow. Well. Some and, great there's, names. and there's one more. <laughs> there's one more, but don't uh, forget anyone. They, yeah. <laughs> but they they were all different. They all had uh, something that they brought to the to the, to, yeah, to to the, the show. But, but the, the best singer was uh, probably Sharon Dale. Yeah. Uh, uh, followed by um, Sandy didn't do did a mm. pretty good job too. Yeah. I'm and Sandy was great. She was just had this lovely charisma about her. I think yeah. they all did. All those girls. Yeah. So. They yeah. certainly enjoyed working with kids and yeah, and kids obviously bring the best out in you. I've got four mm. grandkids that. All right, yeah. Just uh, yeah, you you learn a lot from them. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, they so. were a good day. But yeah. after uh, during yeah. that time, um, I also met um, a fellow whose name is Glenn Capelli. Yeah. And uh, Glenn is probably the the superstar of public speakers. In uh, even today, yeah. you know, and he's been doing it for a long time, and he and he wrote a lot of uh, uh, poetry. Yeah, and from his poetry, uh, I was able to get songs out and so work them into a uh, a youth program that he had called wow. uh, Youth Mastermind. Yeah, so you yeah. would write the music. 
Yeah. And he would write yeah. the poetry. It was mm. a bit like Torpen and, and Elton John. <laughs> 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 well, we, uh, it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it worked for us. Yeah. You know? But so, we didn't sell as many. But <laughs> 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 so talk to me about the Fairway Tavern. What yeah. is so special about the Fairway Tavern? Uh, well, the Fairway Tavern, it, it became... being the 19th hole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it became uh, my place, you know. Mm. Uh, I worked there on, uh, I think I worked there on uh, Saturday night initially. And uh, what used to happen was that every every five years they would have uh, a new lot of management come through. Yeah. So I was on the tail end of uh, one lot of management, Smarty Pervin's right. uh, um, uh, family who, who looked after the place. Yeah. And... Uh, Prior to that, um, uh, Bob Gardner had the gig. Okay. Right. Well, uh, our friend Bob. Yes. Mm. Uh, Bob moved on. Mm. Uh, he had a few nights off, and they asked me to. He asked me to fill in. When he moved on completely, they asked me to do the job. And this was uh, back in the days when it was uh, a vi- it was quite a lot smaller, mm. and the stage was uh, you know four by four. Yeah. Right. And I went there the, the first week and I did what I did. Well, I played a gig, duo gig there a few months ago and stage has still, <laughs> still that small. It's a different room, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they've closed it all in there. Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, they've... Um, so I was... I did the, uh, the work there and then the second week there were... Well, the first week there's only... 20 people there. The second week there were 40. And the third week there was 80. And it grew and grew and grew. Mm. And till eventually they uh, they knocked out a wall and extended it <laughs> and closed it in. Wow. And uh, at, at one stage of the piece, when it was at its peak, uh, that 700 people would go through there, wow. all like this, mm. <laughs> on, a, uh, on a Friday and a Saturday night. Did they pay yeah. you more? Uh, no, no, the, uh, but, but by then I was, I was doing pretty well. I'd worked yeah. my, uh, yeah. my wages up, you know, they were, they were, they were open to negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So recording you, you've done Leo, Leo Woman. That was a single you, you had uh, out at one yeah. time, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now look, my, my big song, or mm. look, with, with the recordings that I've done, um, I, th- I thought that I could, uh, do a recording, do a, do an EP, and take them out on the job on the job and sell them. Yeah. Well, yes, but no, but because <laughs> uh, you know you do a, do a record launch in a pub, so this this is it, folks, mm-hmm. and you sell fifteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did, and um, then so I thought, okay, I'll try again. Next time I did a uh, a tape, and it was called uh, Ticket to the Top, and the same thing, and. Uh, did a record launch night, sold 15 tapes. <laughs> so I thought, well, okay, I've got to do better than this. And the la- the last one that I did was with um, uh, Tony Durant. Right. Uh, Tony Durant yeah. uh, pr- produced it, and um, I thought, okay, I'm going to do. I'll do a launch night, but included in the cost of the the night, they'll get an album. Hmm. So on that night, they got the album, two hours of beer, one and soft drink. <laughs> Right. And it, and we ended up having uh, six hundred people plus mm. uh, to the gig, gig that night. It paid for everything. Wow! You know, I got all my I got all my money back. Do you still sell those those albums? No, 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 no. no, no. I know a place where you could sell them. <laughs> Pro copy. Yeah, no, <laughs> Wayne Wayne Pride uh, found one in a <laughs> in a, uh, a an old shop. You know, one of those yeah. old shops with old LPs in it. Yeah. And uh, it was six dollars. <laughs> mm, the sort of shops that Al hangs around in, in those sort of shops, tie shops. Oh <laughs> uh, right, yeah. That's where I get all my Al's ties. Choice. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, um, I uh, Wayne thought that he did the right thing, and he phoned me up. He said, "Get this, the records." <laughs> I said, well, "Can you get it for us?" <laughs> <laughs> six bucks. He paid him back. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't take six. They gave it to him for three. <laughs> <laughs> so that you did a lot of children's songs, some yeah. albums with, with yeah, children's well, songs I, on I had a, um, a show that I used to take to primary schools. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it was, that was called Fiction, Facts and Fun. 
Yeah. Yeah. And um, we, uh, I took it to uh, primary schools in the metro area, um, up north, down south, anywhere they'd have it really. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, sort of self-esteem based in mm. its concept and a lot of audience participation. Yeah. And uh, uh, a song that has remained with, with me through my uh, kids show and also in taverns is my, uh, my, my hot favourite. Uh, I want to be like Indiana Jones. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just one, one of those things that it, uh, it never became a hit song. I did send it away to all the You cut the, the grass for the wiggles, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd be the lone wiggle. <laughs> the lone wiggle. <laughs> Be the pink one. <laughs> um, so recently, uh, I saw you on Facebook. Your son got married in Japan. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, that was interesting to see that journey um, on fa unfold on Facebook. What What was Japan like? And uh, um, well, it was um, an amazing place. Yeah. Amazing people. Yeah. Incredible ideas. Yeah. Um, they do. They do everything better and more of it. Yeah. You know. And the people are lovely. They're just f very friendly. Quite often, mm. you know, being a tourist, you'd be walking around, where are we? Yes. <laughs> but somebody would always stop and say, can I help you? Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? It's good. Yeah. So the, probably one of the worst things, I don't know, to, to ever happen to you, you recently lost your voice. Yes. And for a singer, that's yeah. probably not a good thing. No, not, not fun. No. <laughs> not fun. Tell us why that happened and how uh, uh, no look i don't know i think it might have been probably just old age <laughs> <laughs> old age <laughs> you know that old case <laughs> no it, it's a it i don't know i don't know what mm. and i know what i know what's wrong mm. but I, I i don't know why so you retired is this why you retired or, uh, or? yeah well, basically yes yeah yeah um my wife still works mm. sorry what's your wife's name judy judy yeah yeah and um, I, at some sometime soon, I will have to go out and, and do something. Yep. Yep. I'm not quite sure what yet. I've had a crack at uh, being a courier. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what was your biggest influence in your life musically? Who, uh, who look, sticks I, out for it, you? It, when, when I was starting, um, <laughs> <coughs> When I was starting, I think uh, probably my father. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because he was quite an entertainer. He could do everything. Yeah. He um, he was. He was um, doing gigs when you were growing oh, up. Oh yeah. Um, n not for a living, mm. but he went out and did some gigs. Yeah. He was a, uh, a very good singer. Yeah. And he had the necessary four octaves in, in his voice mm. to sing opera. Wow. And his his favourites, his favourite artists were guys like Mario Alanza. Richard Tauber, Harry Seagum, mm. those, those sorts of people. But um, so there was, there was that kind of influence, but you know, I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, to sing and play guitar. When I first started, mm. I didn't want to uh, play guitar uh, for a living. It was just uh, something for a bit of fun. Yeah. And, and uh, I thought that uh, uh, doing a bit of caroling with the church was good <laughs> fun, you know. <laughs> Singing around a campfire at yeah. camps was yeah. good fun. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And uh, um, from uh, from there, um, I, I just it, it grew and grew. Mm. It, it, but it wasn't until I was quite a bit older that yeah, that I thought, yeah, I could do this for a living. So if you were stranded at, on a deserted island, ah. or you're going to be, and you yeah, could only yeah. take one album with you, what what album would that be, Keith? Gord's Gold. <laughs> Gord's Gold. Yeah, Gordon Lightfoot. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's, he's just a great uh, singer-songwriter. What was the, the, the most famous song he had? Uh, Sun, Sun Wreck of the Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the one that kicked him off uh, worldwide was If I Could Read Your Mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, yeah. you know, I had a sort of uh, quite a collection of his songs, mm. Simon and Garfunkel, yeah. Paul Simon. Uh, nothing really rocky, mainly uh, songs that uh, w were lyric-driven. Yeah, yeah. And told a bit of a story. So, what would your favourite TV show have been growing up? Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've heard that one. M I C K E Y M O U S E. I know. We 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 used to sit there 
We didn't. We didn't have a TV. Yeah. But the lady down the road did. Yeah. And they started thinking. Used to uh, pile into yeah, joint. on a Friday. We yeah. used to go down to her place. She let us in. And the kid across the road had a. Had God, a I hear TV that story well. so many times. What? You know? I hear that story so many times. Only one person had a TV on the street, yeah. and everyone used to pile into it. <laughs> In charging a dollar or a pound in those <laughs> yeah. days or, or whatever. So do you have any unfulfilled ambitions, Keith? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because I've got a couple of songs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you need a singer? <laughs> you could do it, yes. Oh, no, I can't yeah, really yeah. sing. I know a few no, people that I, can, but... You know, I'd, I'd love to have a... a <laughs> I'd love to have a song, uh, a couple of songs that I've done uh, with uh, the some really good rock musicians yep. and Wasser. I think yeah. we could organise that yeah. sometime for you, yeah. I reckon. Thank you very much. We'll yeah. stay in touch. I'll give you my card. We will, yeah, <laughs> please. We'll swap numbers. Um, so do you collect anything? Uh, no, uh, at the moment, I my hobby is uh, video. You know, I discovered uh, only a few years ago how much I enjoy doing it. I video everything. Okay. Holidays, uh, usually when I go away on holiday, I, uh, I video a song. Yeah. Um, family events things like that. What, so you can look back? Yeah, you know, but it's surprising how, much, how, it, how your catalogue builds up. Mm. Yeah, that's, quite a, that's, that's my hobby. That's, that's what I do mm. uh, in my spare time. Wow, yeah. excellent work. I know someone who's got 5,000 CDs in their room in their house. <laughs> Was it 5,000 or something? Over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Someone who collects something. So what would you put on your gravestone, Keith? Where's my effing car case? <laughs> <laughs> Where's <laughs> your car keys, eh? So, is there anyone that uh, you may have forgot that we haven't talked about, or anything you want to say no. uh, before we finish up? Or, and um, anyone you think would be great to get on the show that you could recommend? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. With Dave Warner. Oh, yes, uh, he's on the list. Tony Durant. Yep. Uh, just recently. Um, I went out and saw Chris Murphy. Yep. He, he will be a great mm. uh, interview. Trying to get the three brothers on together, actually. Uh, I, I don't know oh, the other guys. Yeah, Chris. I, I don't know the other guys. Yeah. I only know Chris. Yeah. But I Courtney, saw his show. He's very funny. Karen. Yeah, great. And yeah. great musicians as well. Um, so, uh, there's Chris. There's a few. There's, there's quite a few others, too. There's... Um, uh, a girl who I think would be a good chat, uh, Fiona, um, Fiona Ray. Yeah. Um, very good. Yeah. Um, well, there's, uh, there's, yep. and there's more. Oh, yep. oh uh, and also Holly Denton. Holly Denton, yep. yeah. Yeah. Great. Because, uh, uh, I mean, I went to see the uh, We Will Rock You yeah. just recently. Yeah, she was quite good. I, think. I, I was... Uh, Blown away. I, was, I was blown away and made me proud to be West Australian. Yes. Because they were all West Australians yeah. on, the, on the stage. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So is there something that we don't know about Keith McDonald that you might want to share with us? Or? Oh, yeah, plenty, but I'm not telling you. not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, so nice to have you in, Keith, okay. and, and have a chat. And you've certainly uh, uh, one of those names around Perth. We have all, all, all know of you and... and and obviously seen you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And um, really appreciate that you've coming in and, yeah. and giving us an insight into your life and your music. Mm -hmm. And hopefully your voice might appear from somewhere and well, you won't need me to we live in hope. for those other <laughs> songs. We live in hope. Thank yeah. you for having us. No, thank you very much. Look, Indeed. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the profile on YouTube. Please like our videos, uh, comment and let us know uh, what you think and, and who, who you think we should interview. And uh, Look, that's it for this week. Um, I'm Gary Dunn. We'll see you next week. Thank you. The beaches I knew many summers ago were always so wide and so wide. And it seemed so long from the start of a day to the darkness of the night. The beaches I knew a few summers ago were places to go fly at night. And to run and to kick at the sand and throwing a ball was all right. Day spring, day spring, hot spring. Time does not stand still. New day's dawn, 
You win spawn I guess they always will Yes they will The peace that I knew Just a summer ago Was a place where life seemed so right We strolled hand in hand Across the gold sand Till the moon took away its last fly But the beaches today Seem so desolate and gray Nothing that I care for inside Shadows of memories But nothing of you Just the space to my left and my right Days break, winds break, hearts break Time does not stand still Youth is dawn, you will spawn I guess they always will Yes, they will Indiana, baby. 
horses, making love to a beautiful woman, driving fast cars over rugged terrain. Indiana, famous Indiana Jones Hunting, swimming, diving, parachuting Oh, I, I, I want to be just like Indiana Jones I want to be just like famous Indiana Brave like Indiana Jones I want to be just like Indiana Famous Indiana Jones Climbing mountains Cracking whips Riding the horses Making love to a beautiful woman Driving fast cars over rugged terrain At Procopy, we can transfer audio to CD, make CD, DVD and Blu-ray copies, transfer video to DVD, Blu-ray or HD, digitise slides and photos and supply custom USBs. You can see more details at procopy.com.au or call us on 089375 3902 for more information.